I just wanted to say I love being on stage because I don't know any other place you can receive so much love at one time. I have a couple of questions, uh, David. Uh, on Saturday, I heard you say that uh, we're over affirmations. Is that what you said? Okay. Well, isn't the Course of Miracles one long affirmation? If you wanted to use it that way, you could use it that way, but it, it actually, when you really get into it, when it starts talking about blood that shines like rubies and tears like diamonds and sepulchers, and it starts to talk about um, attempts to make the body more attractive, it's like putting lipstick on a skeleton. And, I mean, I don't know if you've seen that part of the course, but I could go on. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm focusing more on the, the lessons where they tell you, now repeat this lesson, look at it several times a day, and repeat it over and over again. That's basically the same function of an affirmation. Yeah, I, I think a lot of times affirmations, you could say that there's aspects of the course that you could, if you just pull them out on their own and you pull them out like little gems and jewels, and you say, these these would make really nice affirmations. And then, when you really look at, at the text and the workbook and the manual closely, you start to realize that much of it is focused on exposure and undoing, on raising the darkness to the light. Um, and that whole component, taken together with the affirmations, is part of a training program. It would be almost like if you were uh, doing a diet program and the diet told you, you know, don't eat this, 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 and this, and this, and you said, well, I'm not going to do all that. I'm just going to eat this, 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 well, I won't eat that. You know, and, and the diet wouldn't be as effective <laughs> uh, if you did that, if you made exceptions. So, I've always felt that the Course says, this Course has everything that you need, and, and it was like a a pathway to God that I wanted to, to fully immerse in the entirety of it. And I do see that aspects of it can be used as affirmations, but but the entire package is really kind of more like a roto-rooter. Um, if I had to <laughs> give a, a name to it, it's like you purchased a 1,200-page a roto-rooter and it's all... <laughs> You know, <laughs> digging down there, and and that's because it's unconscious guilt and unconscious darkness. And some of you might have seen the movie What the Bleep Do We Know? And uh, there's a beautiful priest, former priest from uh, from Ireland, who who is talking about affirmations in the movie, and he's saying that it's kind of like a smear, you know, over. Uh, the, the dirt or the darkness that's underneath. Um, and so basically, I think that's what, what I'm talking about in terms of the Course, that it's not trying to smear or paint anything over, it's actually saying you do have to do the work of, of exposure for there to be true authentic healing. And at times I've said it's like, it's like putting icing on a cake of mud. Um, I've said that at thing about affirmations over the years, like putting sweet icing on a cake of mud, that it doesn't take long with the knife, the fork, the spoon. You might scoop some of the icing up there, but you could end up with a mouthful of mud. And that means that you have to get down there and empty out the mud, you know, in that metaphor. Well, thank you for the clarity and uh, definitely uh, in alignment that you have to do the work. And I just wanted to to understand your concept of the parts of the course that appear to be affirmations to me. Uh, the other thing that's greatly on my mind, and I've had this discussion with a few other um, Course of Miracle people, um, I've been into holistic health since I was 18 years old, and I consider myself a research scientist. I have an intuitive as well as a scientific mind, and I have personally healed myself of several life-threatening diseases using organic food, reading labels, selecting the food that I choose, and also educating other people on this, um, if you want to call it a belief system, but it has actually worked for me. And um, I also would like to say I'm the only person in the records of Stanford Hospital that ever dissolved multiple inoperable tumors in her lungs using these protocols. 
And um, I asked Holy Spirit to uh, help me to select my words carefully so there's no make wrong, place blame, or disrespect uh, in what I'm about to say. But I'm very deeply concerned about the what I see, uh, the lack of attention to eating organic foods, uh, eating sugars that, you know, all these things for me and a lot of other people don't work and I'm allergic to wheat. So I've been having a very challenging time eating the diet here. And also I heard that there's no recycling. And so I'm concerned about the environment and I want you to be my mighty companions of destiny by eating uh, foods that I know in my own research and my own experience help you to live longer, help with the senility process, help to prevent Alzheimer's. And I know that there's uh, a belief that you, the mind can heal everything. Well, whenever I go off organic foods and start eating, and I've been eating the diet and I'm having here, and I'm having all kinds of problems. So I just wanted some alignment or I wanted some um, assurance or um, support in awareness of the foods that you put in your mouth and the choice of foods that you, you serve, and also recycling. Yeah, I can talk about it a little bit. I started to talk a little bit about memory and linear time and selective memory and so forth. Selective memory is based on on judgments and preferences and so on and so forth. And so, if if I had to give a name to everything that you just talked about, um, I would call it magic. And one who becomes very good at the, the mastery of magic, we could call a magician. Um, magic is so believable to the deceived mind, to the mind that's asleep and dreaming and that has forgotten it's dreaming. Um, magic is so believable because it seems to work. And you just attested to that. Um, you know, whether we're talking about eating organically or all the various things that you described, even in terms of recycling for ecology, and there's some of those things that just come in naturally, very intuitively for, for many, and, and it's just beautiful guidance is what I would say. There's nothing right or wrong about it. It's all been but, guidance on my part. I ask for guidance every morning. Yeah, just ask. And what I'm saying is, is that everything of this world is like a cosmos of images and a cosmos of movement and motion, including the ecosystem and the weather patterns and everything. The, the molecules, everything is, is moving in motion. And, and when the mind can seem to rearrange uh, those things in form, could be any of those things you described, it can seem to bring about um, benefits that's, that are judged by the world, you know, obviously longevity or not having senility and those things you were talking or about. Or Alzheimer's. Or Alzheimer's, those kind of things. And those are all magical in the sense that, that all of those things that seem to involve changes in form and changes in outcomes, which we were talking about earlier, were made to distract away from a change of mind. And I'm talking about a, a huge change of mind from ego thinking to spirit thinking. So, because they seem to work, you know, Gandhi used herbs, for example, yes, herbal healing and so yes. forth. And there's many, many things that seem to work, even within the field of medicine. Uh, we could say there's certain drugs and certain procedures that, that have been judged as highly effective. Um, and that's why they're repeated, that the effective ones are used over and over again. But it is a giant system of trying to change the form in order to bring relief. And really, that's what healing is about. Whether it's relief in terms of clarity of the mind instead of senility, or it's, it's feeling better with the body, uh, not diseased. Uh, you know, all those things are part of a giant uh, magical system, and I would say if we had to put one phrase underneath all of those things, that's an attempt to achieve peace and harmony and love through mastery of fear. Because when you're moving all the things around, it's an attempt to say, there's fear, and 
I can come to some kind of a mastery through my skills and abilities and through tests and experience and everything. And what we're being taught by Jesus in A Course in Miracles is the only thing that will succeed is mastery through love. That, that there's no amount of tinkering with the images, no amount of rearranging the deck chairs of the Titanic or, or reorganizing anything that will actually bring peace and harmony. Now, that's the, that's the whole way of the world. The world is, if I just tinker with this and change a little of that and this and that, there's sciences, all this whole scientific uh, fields of thought that are based on that tinkering. That's right. And, and you go and you get, you know, whether it's Reiki and you get second degree, third degree, fourth, you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's medical science or herbal science or alternative energy uh, healing systems and so forth. There's, there's, all of those would be in the category of mastery through fear. And there's a workbook lesson in The Course in Miracles that's a great contrast to all of that. And it says, only salvation can be said to cure. If I interpret that in more Eastern terms, it would be only enlightenment can be said to cure. Or only self-realization can be said to cure. You talked about Ramana Maharshi. Yes. So we can link right there on that. We can say, we actually all share the same goal, and that is know thyself, like the Greeks said, self-realization. And that to do that, we have to come so far inward that we come to the original error, whatever, call it the fall from grace, like it does in the Bible or in, in different traditions, Bhagavad Gita, everyone's got a little different story around the fall, but it, it's still there. And what we're going for is to go all the way back to that seeming mm -hmm. false cause that made all this fragmentation, mm -hmm. that made all this seeming separation, and seeing that that's laughable. That we have to actually see how laughable that original error is. And that's why I was sharing up there on Saturday morning that the world is causeless, because as long as we think the cause of this world is real, which is the ego, not God. But as long as we think the cause is real, then we will surely believe the effects. Even though we've been told by the Holy Spirit that the effects are gone. The effects of guilt are gone. They were handled by the Holy Spirit instantaneously. It didn't take the Holy Spirit millions of years to handle the problem. It was like that. Now the acceptance of that means that we have to pull ourselves inward past all magical attempts at the solution and f and have the spiritual awakening experience that shows us that the that the illusion of separation never happened so really we're joined at that i always say to people follow your guidance you're following your guidance every day you're waking up and you're praying and you're asking and we're joined in that we're opening to hear that same voice, to feel that same presence, to have that presence radiate through us to the whole universe. And, and when you see someone else, you know, you could, you could say in your mind, the Spirit could just says, take not another's pathway as your own, neither should you judge it. So what's intuitively working for you is something that I think is very important looking, as you look deeper in, in inquiry, like you were talking about it, you'll start to see more and more that there's just one central problem and that that problem has been replaced. And so over the years, I and you and many of us have, have experimented with eating in our spiritual journey, like Gandhi experimented mm -hmm. with, you know, vegetarian cooking, herbs and, and so forth, fasting. We've done a lot of that. We experiment with our relationships, we experiment with our environments, we experiment with, you're well read in different, many different systems, we, we open our minds and experiment with thoughts, and as we go deeper and deeper, we see that we're really practicing letting go of judgment. That's really been our central addiction, is the I know mind and, and judging things. And we're being called inward to start to see that, that the cause is our mind. 
and that there aren't causes and effects in the world. But that takes a lot of practice to not make exceptions with that. So I can certainly relate to lots of what you're talking about because that a lot of that's been part of my parable as well, my journey as well. Thank you so much, David, for your clarity and your love. I really am so grateful to be here, even though this has been probably one of the most challenging experiences of my life. Okay, thank you, ladies. My neighbor in Hawaii. <laughs> here we are in the desert. <laughs> <laughs>